All right, guys, so we're going to try and annotate some of our Q1 practice prompts here. So um, basically, you were um, supposed to mark these, then block them, um, and then send in your response to that worksheet. So it's now time to kind of review this together, and I'm just trying this camera out to see if it'll work. So bear with me while I walk through, okay? All right, so we start off by reading this. Familial roles and relationships often provide subject matter for artists across cultures and time periods. How those roles or relationships are portrayed often reflect a carefully chosen social, political, and or art historical message. All right, that is my opener. There's no task there, so I'm going to bracket that just to show Mr. J that I've read it, but I now know what the theme is. It's going to be on ideas of family. The next paragraph goes, the work shown uses a specific familiar relationship to convey a social, political, and or historical message to the viewer. Select and identify another work from the required course content that makes use of a specific familial relationship to convey a social, political, and or historical message to its viewer. Man, I'm already tired. Okay, if this happens and you get a long introductory paragraph at the beginning, you need to pace yourself and really focus on what you're being told. We go on here, it says you may select a work from the list below, or you may choose any other relevant work from ancient Mediterranean, early Europe and colonial Americas, or Africa. So this is giving you a specific list of things that you could choose from. You would not be able to choose from indigenous Americas. You would not be able to choose, of course, from global prehistory, but we wouldn't want to because we don't know what to say about any prehistoric works. Um, you would not be able to use later Europe and Americas either, so just beware. They might pull that fast one on you, but ultimately there's no points there, so I can just show that I've read it. Uh, we get into the body of the work. I'm, get, I'm seeing verbs, verbs, verbs. Okay, here's my list of things down here I can use. Spaniard and Indian produce a mestizo. The tet, a tet from marriage a la mode, the breakfast scene, or veranda post of enthroned king and senior wife Opa Ogoga. Um, no points there, but now I know what I can choose from safely, that this is going to be about family relationships. Um, the work that I'm being shown is Jan van Eyck's Arnold Feeney portrait. So the idea is that we've got to work with that work and one of these down at the bottom, okay? So, all right, I have a pretty good framework of what we're expecting. Now I'm ready to go in and circle some action words. All right, verbs right here, describe, explain, explain. All right, uh, that's only three. So I bet if I do some connecting, we're gonna find some additional little tasks that are stuck in there, okay? So let's go back through there. It says, and, all right. Uh, we are looking for, I, I like to do this how. How is very important. Uh, and you're selected. Okay, so we got to do both of these. Okay, explain one difference or similarity in how artists chose. I'm going to go ahead and box that how because that's going to help me understand. Um, it says use specific visual and or contextual evidence from each. All right, so I already know that some of these tasks are going to double up on what I need to do. So here we go. Let's get into this and talk a little bit more. It says describe specific subject matter indicating a distinct family relationship. All right, distinct means I got to know what are these guys? Are they brother and sister? Are they um, mother and son? Are they husband and wife? I want to be as specific about what kind of relationship I'm seeing because this is part of the test, okay? They want to know if I'm looking at the Arnolfini portrait that I know that's a marriage context where if I'm looking at something like um, Veranda Post of, of Enthroned King and Senior Wife, I'm looking at a different relationship altogether. Okay, um, and basically what we have, um, the specific subject matter indicating a distinct relationship depicted in the work and your selected work. Okay, so I think that's a double test there. I'm going to go ahead, guys. I know I'm doing this a little out of order. Subject matter with subject matter. That is really specific. So content in the picture has to be about a specific family relationship. Those are the things I need to focus on. All right, so moving on, um, using specific VE. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. 
from the required work and your selected work. Now we get to the task. Explain how the different depictions. All right, this is going to be a difference, right? Not a similarity this time. How are they different of these relationships? Okay, there's the kicker. We're talking about them and why they reflect the artist's intent. What did the artist want to do with this piece? As they were basically focusing on family relationships, which you could talk about all day long, we now have to talk about what they really wanted this thing to do. Um, moving on, I explain one difference or one similarity. I get to choose, all right, and how artists chose to use the portrayal of familial relationship to convey a specific social political or historical message to the viewer. All right, so there it is. That's my important stuff right there. Okay, you can see we're talking about family relationships all the way through, but there's specific aspects of that family relationship that we're having to really convey here in our, our response. Now it says use VE or CE, so I'm going to put that down as a reminder to myself. Um, and this helps me break everything down. Okay, so I know I've got light restrictions on what I can choose up here. I'm going to be very, very careful if I go off list. Be, be careful, careful if you do. Um, all right, so where can we label the points now? Describe the specific subject matter indicating a distinct relationship depicted in the required work and in your selected work. That's T1 and T2. I know I'm blocking the camera here. T1, T2. Next line says, using specific VE from the required work and your selected work, explain how the different depictions of these relationships reflect the artist's intent. I think this is going to be one of those situations, guys, where even though they say and, they're going to expect that we do that as part of the evidence, and we maybe get um, one point for this. Okay, so I'm going to put T3 here for now. Then it says explain one difference or similarity and how the artist chose to use the portrayal to convey a specific social, political, or historical message. I think that's my T4. Um, and then I think because they separated this and said use specific visual or contextual evidence from each work that I'm going to get a T5 and a T6 out of that. Now, some of you may have gone back to this and said, well, that really is T3, T4, and we've got a seven-point rubric. Um, that's okay. Um, if you are setting those aside, specific tasks that you need to do, as long as you answer every aspect of the task, then I think you're going to cover the points really, really well. Okay? So if I come up here just to the side and I block this one now... I think my picture is going to look a little bit like this, okay? And I know that you can't see the prompt while I'm blocking. All right. Um, first thing was to describe the subject matter. So, and I had to do it for both works. So I know what shape I want right here. And I'm going to do T1, T2. I'm going to try to find specific subject matter. That's all about what this relationship is in both of those works, all right? So... I move on down um, a little bit further, and it said, uh, describe, okay, got described, um, uh, different depictions of these relationships, right, and how they reflect the artist's intent. All right, so I know that I've got an arrow going this way. I know I've got an arrow going that way for difference. This idea is about artistic intent. So how are these two things different uh, in showing that family relationship reflecting artistic intent. All right, that's my T3. Okay, that's a loaded T3, right? It's not just about family. It's also about what the artist wanted to do with this family and what he was using to talk to them about. Um, it says, explain one difference or similarity. I could have an arrow going both ways. If you know by this point exactly what it is that you want to do, you don't have to do this. You can say, I'm definitely talking about a similarity or I'm definitely talking about a difference but I'm gonna let you decide, okay? So here's my T4, there's a difference here in how they communicate social, political, or historical messaging. And now I have to put in here to back myself up some evidence, and it can be either visual or contextual, okay? With VE, with CE, with VE, or with CE. So there's my T5, there's a T6, and now I know what framework we're looking at, right? So describe 
explain explain with more significant evidence you can kind of see how this is getting more challenging as we work our way down to the bottom right so um, we want to elaborate especially in situations where we see this evidence down here standing alone as a task point and really clearly state um, what the similarity or difference is that we're talking about. I, I don't think you guys can do all three points here in one sentence. I think these need to be separate ideas and separate sentences. For T3, I think you could use one of those sentences that says, while one does this a certain way, blah, 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 the other blah, blah and i think that could be maybe one long phrase right but if you if you need to break up your sentences there that's totally fine um, they will know as they read these that they're tied to the same task if you've done some assist right we're going to double space our, our response we're going to break wherever the prompt breaks can you guys look down here there we go um, you can see essentially that, you know, if you wanted to describe them both in one paragraph, you could. Some of you are doing a really good job of breaking anyway in between T1, T2. You could break at T3, and then everything for the last paragraph could be T4, T5, T6. But that needs to be a substantial paragraph if you look at the pyramid at the bottom, okay? So this is only one of the prompts that you could look at. I'm going to do a video for each of the others, and hopefully you get some review of content here as well. Of course, you guys know there's some discussion about what this image is. Um, the Arnolfini portrait, basically a wedding that has um, already happened, or one that hasn't yet, or one that actually commemorates someone who's no longer with us. So there's some discussion to be had there. It's from the Northern Renaissance, and it's finished with a high degree of detail with tons of subject matter about what the relationship is between a husband and his, his new wife, okay? For um, Spaniard and Indian producing a mestizo, um, you realize that this is part of a Casta painting series, and it's most likely something that was collected by a patron who wanted to demonstrate um, what he thought about racial inequities. Um, this would have been probably the first in the series, and it probably would have demonstrated um, a female um, and a male, uh, basically highborn in both of their societies, producing uh, an offspring uh, modeled off of the image of the Holy Family. So um, you would have, you know, period costumes and indicative um, subject matter that shows a relationship between father, mother, and child. The tete-a-tete, -tete, you guys realize from William Hogarth's breakfast scene, uh, Marriage a la Mode, we're basically um, satirizing um, the nouveau riche and their lack or inability to put a house on its good founding or, or footing, right? There's all kinds of content you can use to show the nature of that relationship because it's really being made fun of. In the veranda post, um, this is an Oluwe of Issei work, uh, what you see is a direct connection between the female and the male, because the, the ruler doesn't rule without the consent of the people that he governs. And in this case, it's actually the females, the, the ancient mothers, who are bequeathing him with that power. So you see a connection from her chin into the back of his head. You see her breasts go right into his, his lower uh, neck region, right? Uh, there's a connection visually between the two that lets you know this is really a relationship about balance, right? Or maybe we could say the long word, reciprocity. So you have different kinds of relationships that you could use, and it just depends on which one you're more comfortable with um, as you try to select these works. So um, I hope that helps you uh, get some ideas going. You didn't have to write this essay. But I wanted to walk you back through how I would have annotated it and how we would have made sure to answer all parts of the question. Thanks, guys. I'll be back with more in just a second.